Hi everybody, welcome back to Blue Lady Couture. As you can see today, I am joined by Mr. BLC, aka my husband Scott. We're doing a slightly different video today. Um, we have just been away on a little adventure, our first trip away in these times of plague and Covid. Um, it was our first stay overnight in a hotel and it was a very interesting hotel and we thought we'd do a little review and a little uh, a vlog about it. So we are very excited that we got to stay in a Georgian spa. We visited the beautiful town of Buxton in northern Derbyshire. Uh, we have been to the Fermi Spa at Bath. Bath is obviously the very famous uh, spa town here in Somerset. And that made us realise just how much we actually enjoy a good spa day. We don't do it very often, but when we get the chance, we do like the opportunity to do that. So when we heard that the Buxton Crescent um, had been completely restored and had a gorgeous new spa hotel um, being incorporated into it, we really couldn't wait to try it out. So we visited over the 21st of June, which is the midsummer solstice, and what could be more fitting than bathing in mineral spa waters, which are or were originally dedicated to uh, an ancient goddess. And we have the beautiful grade one Georgian architecture to appreciate as well. So this place ticks a lot of our boxes. So follow along and see how we got on and uh, what we thought of the place. A lot of you may not be aware of uh, the UK or any of the areas within the UK. Um, so we've done a little map um, that will show you roughly where Buxton is in the UK. Um, and then also we've got uh, a second map that we'll show in a minute that shows you how to get from the car park round to the Crescent. Yeah, because the thing with the Crescent is obviously it is a very old building. It wasn't built with modern car parking facilities in mind. So it doesn't actually have its own car park. Um, you have to use a public car park and the public car park is a pay and display, um, which is quite common in the UK. Um, and you have to have actual coins to pay for that. And the parking is five pound forty for ten hours, hours. Um, and that will take you through to eight o'clock the next day if you if you're checking in at three o'clock. Um, mm. But that does also mean that at eight o'clock the next day you do have to go and top that car up. Um, and unfortunately, because there is no digital system currently, you have to go and physically go to the parking machine to put the money in. So the car park was basically recommended um, by the hotel, it is the nearest one to them. Um, they are planning to introduce concierge parking. I think they have an area in the, uh, it's, it, the, the, the car park has two tiers and the under tier is actually a lockable area. It gets locked overnight um, and the hotel are about to start an agreement with the, uh, the car park providers to have a concierge service where they will take your car and park it in there for you overnight. Um, but because of we're currently still in COVID restrictions and the restrictions have just been extended, um, they're not able to offer that service at the moment. So you do have to park your own car. When they do um, decide to open that up, they were talking at roughly £20, but that's, again, that was just in passing and they, that isn't the final price. So yes, any of the prices we quote yeah. could change between now and then. So after arriving, um, we had a quick look around outside of the Crescent after it's had its beautiful restoration, multi-million pound restoration. And that's been ongoing for about 10 years? 17 years. 17 years. It took them 10 years to build the, the Crescent originally back in the 1780s. Um, we will do a little bit more throughout the video about the history of the building as well, so do stick around for that. Um, but yeah, very briefly, it was built in the 1780s and it took 10 years to build. The restoration, I think, was started in 2003 and they finished it uh, last year in 2020, so yeah. 17 years and I think 50 million, 50 million pounds at least. And it takes a lot to restore a grade one listed building because there are an awful lot of things that you have to adhere, adhere to, um, to to restore it back to its, um, well, as close to original as they can get it. Yeah, they've obviously had to maintain a lot of original features um, because of the grade one listing. Um, 
and there's certain things they can't do in terms of putting modern features and, and that in it. It's, it's very complicated, um, but but yeah, it's it looks like they've, they've done an amazing job from the outside. It looks absolutely beautiful. So when we arrive, then um, you go through a door on the left-hand side, um, off centre, um, and you come into a lobby area. And that lobby area is um, is greeted by a member of staff who uh, helps you to to just settle, and uh, they then take you across to a counter to then check in. After you check in, um, you then get met by uh, another member of staff who accompanies you to the room door to so make sure you don't get lost in the vastness of the hotel. Um, and again, during COVID, uh, the chap had to run up the stairs because he couldn't join us in the lift. Um, I mean, he wasn't even out of breath. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a big hotel. They have 80 rooms, I believe. 80 rooms and yeah, four but, floors. Yeah, four floors. Mm. And then um, we strolled around to our room from the lift, um, room 413, and 13 being our lucky number and four being the, uh, the floor that we were already staying on. And inside the room, we had uh, a double bed. Uh, I think it was a queen double bed. I think so. Um, and there was some original features in there that they'd amusingly worked the doors around uh, for the bathroom because they were very, very low. Um, am, am I allowed to talk about the room? Yes. <laughs> you know what I'm going to say. <laughs> no, no, not at all. <laughs> So floor four is essentially it's the, the top floor of the hotel and they're called the attic rooms and because they are in the attic and originally they would have been the, the servants quarters essentially um, and I did at the time when, I, when Scott first told me they had booked the attic rooms I did whip him something <laughs> something terrible about the fact that we couldn't afford to stay in the, the, the posh rooms on the, the lower floors and there's an element of truth in that obviously because they are slightly smaller rooms, they because they're in the attics and they've not got as high a uh, ceiling um, and they've not got the, the big sort of Georgian windows in them, um, they work the cheaper rooms, but no, which is fine um, because at the end of the day, we don't spend a lot of time in the hotel room. You know, we kind of sleep there, you get changed, you know, have a shower and whatever. Um, the rest of the time, you're out and about and uh, you're there to enjoy the spa facilities at the end of the day. Um, so yeah, we I don't begrudge the fact that we pay a slightly lower rate to be in the attic rooms. And in fact, it was I thought it was it was quite fun, you know, to see that side of the building because you don't always see that even in modern kind of hotels that are in sort of older you know, sort of buildings. The attic rooms will still be reserved for, you know, staff and office spaces. So to actually be able to stay in the attic rooms was really fun and interesting. And um, it was a little bit almost not the right era with the building being Georgia, but, you know, a little bit Downton Abbey, you know, you see that side of, of the building. Um, and as a bit of footage in the room will show, um, we did actually have a really good view out the window. You, you can see that there is the, the Georgian kind of... Uh, Balustrade, um, there might be a technical term for it, I'm not big on my architecture terminology, <laughs> but I, I call it a, a, a balustrade, the stone balustrade at the, at the very top that you can see when you're kind of looking up at the building from down below. The windows are set back behind there, so obviously being the servants' quarters, you can't see it from the street. Um, but it did mean, you know, we were obviously nice and high above all the rooftops in, in Buxton, and you could see out and you could see uh, the, the, the famous dome, the Devonshire dome, um, a, a little bit further away, and then you had the uh, the, the hills um, uh, just on the on the horizon as well. Because Buxton is located uh, right on the doorstep of the beautiful Peak District National Park. Um, so yeah, so if you're in, in the area for more than a few days, um, I definitely recommend you know, getting out into the countryside around around Buxton as well. So uh, with, within the room itself, um, you get the queen bed. Um, the attic rooms all only have showers, um, so something to bear in mind if you are looking at booking. Um, they also include all of the usual things you expect to see in a hotel, so there's a, a mini fridge in there. Um, they include a smart TV um, in as well. Um, it's a teeny tiny little smart TV, but uh, it was it was good enough was for us. Nice, and yeah, again, uh, we're we're only in there for yeah. probably at most six or seven hours. Yeah, we're not sitting there to you know watch TV. At the most, we might sort of put it on just you know while we're getting ready or in something. In the background, or, yeah. yeah, it's yeah. Um, 
So yeah, so the, it, it, the bathroom's on suite and um, the whole thing, it was spotlessly clean, obviously. It is a brand new hotel. Um, it opened in October of 2020 and we were due to go in the November, um, but we locked down and all the hotels had to close. Um, so we couldn't go. Um, and it only reopened again in May um, and we're now in June. So yeah, so this is a brand new hotel. So everything is absolutely spotless in there. Mm -hmm. Yep, the, the carpets are particularly thick and bouncy. Yes, nice areas. plush carpets. Um, and then the other thing in the bathroom was Penn Halligan's toiletries. <laughs> So if you don't know who Penhaligans are, they are a very high-end uh, perfumery brand uh, located in London. And they also have the uh, the Royal Charter. They supply sort of perfumes and things to the royal family. Um, and yeah, so to have that in a hotel room, it's a bit posh. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so that was a lovely treat to be to be able to uh, to have yeah Penhaligans on tap, as it were. <laughs> I think the only downside in the in the hotel rooms is they still start very much to the format of very basic tea and coffee um, it, it was very it was the same kind of teas and coffees that you'd expect to see in a much lower value hotel so that's something that they could probably improve upon in the future um, just little things like having potentially loose leaf tea in the room rather than pre-packaged um, catering packets. Or oh, just a nice brand like Twinings. It wasn't yeah. in Twinings tea, was it? it no, was it, was... Just, it was. I don't think it even had a brand. It was just no. like sort of generic hotel kind of tea, yeah. which is a little bit disappointing when it is supposed to be a five star hotel. Um, but yeah, it's not. That's not the end of the world. Again, you're not spending all day drinking tea in your room, so it's just one of those little things. God, we sound like right little tea <laughs> Well. At the end of the day, it's a, it is an expensive hotel. <laughs> yes. Yes. So we. So as soon as we checked in and checked into the room, and we headed down to the spa, um, because the hotel is operating under COVID restrictions at the moment, the spa is only open to hotel guests, and you have to get changed into your swimwear in your room and. Bath robes are provided for you along with uh, slippers as well. Although I found that these slippers were absolutely humongous on me. Um, so we did actually bring our own flip flops uh, with us um, anyway, just in case, because we weren't 100% sure, you know, whether anything like that would be provided. Um, and normally in spas, you do have to wear some kind of footwear in between sort of the, the pool areas or in like the, uh, the, the, the cafe uh, kind of area as well. And the uh, bathrobes that they supplied were very, very nice. Um, they were supplied as XLs, so both of us were a little bit swamped in them. But uh, it's great for drying off and sort of keeping warm between the colder areas of the spa. So when we went down to the spa, um, which is on the first floor, um, it's you, you go down to the first floor via the lifts or via the stairs um, and then follow the, the signs round to the right. Um, at the end of the corridor, and um, there's then a door that you let yourself in with your, you, your, door card. your hotel key card. Um, and then you're greeted by a member of staff literally as soon as you get through the door. Um, they will then ask if you want to book any kind of treatment. So we didn't have any treatments booked this time around, um, but we may do in the future. Um, and then they take you, well, they ask if you'd like a tour of, of the facilities, um, and then they give you your towel and um, which you don't need to bring down from your room and they have all the towels down there within the spa itself and then they take you on a tour of the the actual spa itself but we're going to go through more of the actual individual facilities of the spa a little bit further down on, on the video yeah we didn't film anything on the first afternoon we were there because we weren't sure how busy it would be you know whether we'd be able to film anything um, and obviously we wanted to just experience the spa you know for ourselves um, as well so yeah so the, the footage of the spa will be from the next day yeah so we checked in at three didn't we um so we would have been in the spa by four uh, the spa is open till eight o'clock in the evening so we really wanted to make the most of uh, that time because because the, uh, the spa is only open to hotel guests you can only go in the spa while you're checked into the hotel and also because we're only there for one night it's not a lot of time you know to by the time you've 
got there in the afternoon and then when you're checking out the next morning and you've got a fit breakfast in as well so yeah we want to make sure we got as much time in the spa as we, we could out of our, our trip and we would have probably stayed in the spa a little bit longer but the spa cafe unfortunately closes at four o'clock which when you're checking closes in it's for food closes for food at yeah. four o'clock um, so you can still have a drink um but uh, yeah they, they close completely for food um from four o'clock which when you check in at three o'clock isn't really a big enough window to allow you to check in, experience the spa, or even have a look around the spa before having to have something to eat, yeah. um, which was a little bit of a shame. But sparring uh, is tiring. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, you know, when you go swimming, it just makes you ravenously hungry. I don't know why, but yeah. <laughs> and we, we weren't the only people there that were trying to get food, and it was pretty much on repeat because we did stop for some orange juice. Um, and while we were sat there, even there was people sort of constantly saying, "Oh, are you serving food?" And so I think that the hotel could learn something there in that they could probably supply food a little bit later. Um, and it would give them, well, essentially it would, it would give them those uh, extra hours within the spa itself. So after the spa, we then went back up to our room, um, had a quick shower and got changed for dinner. Um, we decided to have dinner in the bar um, because there wasn't any, well, we, we could have booked in the restaurant, but we weren't sure on the COVID restrictions and whether we were comfortable with that. Yeah, and it was also, again, coming back to only having limited time in the spa, uh, only having one night in the hotel, we didn't want to, obviously a, a sit-down dinner in a posh restaurant takes a lot of time, uh, and we, we didn't know kind of how the timings would work out, so we thought it'd be easier if the... the Bar food was available to eat in the bar um, and you say, just, just save ourselves a bit more time and, and be a bit more relaxed. Yeah, so we um, got changed, went down and had the usual flap to try and find the appropriate place to eat. Um, where is the bar? <laughs> and as it turns out, the bar's right on the ground floor and um, right the way around to the left hand side of the hotel and um, right at the very end. Um, and again, we were greeted by members of staff um, and it was kind of encouraged that we would just find our own table and then they would come and serve us to the table. Again, probably mainly due to the COVID restrictions. Found a nice little area, what can only really be described as a, a Victorian snug, really. It was quite a nice, cosy environment. Um, and then we ordered a cocktail each and um, I ordered a mojito. Um, and Joe opted for the, um, the the cocktail special of the day. Yeah, so the, the, the bar staff do uh, their own special uh, cocktails of the day, um, where it's something that is kind of made up by them and that they sort of experimented with. And uh, the offering that they had on while we were there was a, a mint chocolate uh, confection. Um, it says something about they make the, the, the mint, I don't want to say mint sauce because it wasn't like mint sauce, but like the mint. The actual mint chop, the, the, the mint, mint they grow. Yeah, it's, it was made in house, um, they said. Um, and you know, well, I, I love like mint chocolate chip ice cream is my favourite, so I was like sold at mint chocolate. So I was like, yes, please sign me up. Um, I don't know what the actual alcohol was in it, but um, it was very nice. It was very smooth and very creamy. Um, kind of more on the spectrum of Bailey's rather than a strong alcohol. Yeah, it was a alcohol. very, very sweet kind of. Um, and my mojito, whereas some mojitos can be quite um, tart with the, the lime in them, and this is actually a really nice, smooth mojito. And we had, um, well, I had a, a, a beef burger um, with fries, and that was very, very nice, very, very good quality meat. Mm -hmm. I can't remember, what did you have? I had the toasted BLT. Oh, yeah. um, and, and I had a side of truffle parmesan fries. <laughs> well, they weren't fries, they were full chips. Yeah, they were, they chips. were, they were big chips. <laughs> yes, I think they were like the triple cooked chips. They were very and nice And then they as had well. like, the, the, the truffle oil and the parmesan over them as well. And they were very, very nice, yes. And also very filling. They were really filling, <laughs> yes, they were. <laughs> so after we'd uh, had our meal, um, we then uh, went back up to the room um, and... Yeah, crashed basically. <laughs> crashed after a, an afternoon of being in the spa. <laughs> and the only thing I will say is, if you are staying up in the attic rooms, make sure that you turn the aircon on before you go to bed. Maybe on a, a, a temperature that you're comfortable with, because the temperature does rise quite quickly in those attic rooms. So without that on, I think we would have been a little too hot overnight. Um, but uh, yeah, other than that, it was a comfortable night's sleep. 
Very comfy bed, very soft and sort of squishy bed and pillows, wasn't it? Yeah. Then the next day we uh, got up, went down for breakfast, um, which you'd arranged for 8.30. Yeah, so the hotel actually phoned us on the Friday. We checked in on the Sunday. The hotel phoned on the Friday just to confirm that we were sort of planning to come. Um, and they told us that due to the restrictions, we had to book in a slot for breakfast. And they also asked us if we wanted to book a, a reservation for the, the, uh, the dinner on the, the Sunday night. Um, which we, we declined as we explained previously um, but yes yeah, so we had to book a slot for, for breakfast um, and we booked for half past eight so uh, when we got up um, I dashed off to top up the car um, which was slightly fraught because the machine was actually full of cash so uh, I had to then go around the car park to try and find a, an, a machine that would actually accept the money um, and then put a new ticket on the car um, by which time when I came back Joe was ravenous <laughs> um, and then we went down to the breakfast room which is the same as the main restaurant in the hotel yeah the main dining room so it's used for dinner in the evenings when we got down there we were greeted by another member of staff who checked our room number and checked us into a table um, and then pretty much as soon as we were sat down we were greeted with the slices of toast immediately yeah. um, and another chap that took our orders for both the buffet and for any cooked items that we want yeah, to Yeah, so normally, menu. obviously, in, a, in English hotels, you normally have the, the buffet selection, which is where you have your fresh fruit, cereals, uh, fruit juice, that, uh, yogurt, so that kind of thing. Or your um, usual continental items. Yeah, you, you, know, and normally, you normally help yourself to those, sort of buffet style, um, and then you order any cooked items um, for your waiter, uh, which comes from the kitchen. Um, but because, again, of COVID restrictions, uh, they you're not allowed to go up to the buffet yourself, uh, so you have to tell your waiter what you would like and then he would go and and fetch it for you and bring it back to your table and then um, for the breakfast i uh, opted for eggs benedict um, and it was probably one of the nicest eggs benedict that i've ever had um, and i've had i've eaten in a few fairly expensive restaurants um, and ordered eggs benedict uh, and yes it was by far one of the nicest uh, that i've had um, Joe went for a, a full English breakfast, um, which looked lovely. Yeah. It was really lovely. Um, it was a nice, light full English breakfast. Sometimes full English can be quite heavy or it can be a bit greasy. This wasn't in any way. Um, it was really nicely done. Um, it had uh, potato cakes instead of uh, hash browns. And so again, that was quite nice and, and lightweight. Um, and there was, uh, it had black pudding on it as well, which is not something you always see on sort of every sort of English breakfast, um, sometimes it can depend on sort of where you are in the country and sort of what kind of hotel it is. Um, then we had um, fresh tea and coffee yeah. um, served to us as well. And this was proper loose leaf Earl Grey tea, which is why we were a little bit, when we said earlier about the tea and coffee in the rooms being a little bit subpar. Um, obviously down in the restaurant and the bars, they are serving Proper, no, proper tea and coffee, and it was loose leaf tea as well. It was, yeah. uh, it was very nice and yeah. very fragrant. We generally only drink Earl Grey um, anyway. Um, tea we're not tea snobs. <laughs> um, Earl, Earl Grey is still very much low on the scale of tea snobbery. <laughs> um, but I'm not a massive fan of your traditional breakfast teas. It, it just tends to be a bit of a mishmash of tea anyway. Um, but yeah, so we, we had all of that and that was all very, very nice. The service was, again, absolutely spotless. And the actual restaurant itself was a very nice decor, quite modern, um, but with a kind of under the water theme. Um, so all of the light fittings were coral, uh, mm. like silver coral patterns um, with lights behind them. Um, but the whole hotel very much has a kind of a a blue and silver kind of colour for it so it's a very lovely sort of calm and sort of relaxing kind of colour and it varies from sort of darker shades of blue uh, through just some lighter shades and it's just really really nicely nicely done and it works really well with the, the whole uh, the Georgian um, architecture as well. Okay so uh, after breakfast we went back up to the room uh, to again get back into our uh, sewing costumes and go back down to the spa on the way, I nipped over to reception to see if there was any possibility of us checking out slightly later, and they gave us an extra hour, um, which gives us a little bit of extra time in the spa. So normal checkout is 11, um, so they extended it to 12 for us. They did do it for free. I don't know whether they would always do it for free, but obviously you can always ask. On this occasion, they did. 
on the website they do detail that there could be an additional charge for late checkouts. I got the impression from reception that it, if they were extending it any more than the extra hour, they would have probably then started to go into a chargeable area because it means that they then need to turn the room around an awful lot quicker. Probably depends on how busy the hotel is as well as whether they're able to accommodate that. But yeah. But we got quite lucky with that, so that was um, that was quite a nice pixie dust moment um, for anyone that's watching from the Disney side of things. Um, which refers to when you get essentially a freebie um, or a nice thing happen to you that is um, kind of above and beyond customer service that you don't normally experience. Um, so the spa, they did say it opens at 7 normally, so if you are an early bird you can get up uh, and get out of the spa at 7 and really make the most of your, your time in there, um, but we, we hadn't realised this and it's a bit too early for us, um, but we were in the spa I would say by half nine, I think, weren't we? I think we were out of breakfast by nine. Yeah, um, we, were, so we were. I mean, the service in the restaurant was, was really quick, so we were, yeah, yeah, very, yeah, by the time we got back upstairs and sort of got changed and come back down again, um, we were definitely, yeah, in the spa by half nine, so we knew we had about about two hours, give or take, um, to allow us to get out of the spa and get changed and, and not to clear out of the room and, and check out properly. So when we went back down to the spa, um, we were not greeted by any members of staff. I was quite surprised at how sparse both the levels of staffing was, but equally we were the only people in the spa at that time. Um, and we were <laughs> we literally had the ability to go around and film it all for you guys to uh, to give you a good look yeah, so, at the spa. Yeah, so we took the camera on this occasion because we thought, well, even if there's like, people in there, we could perhaps film just us up the corner or something, you know, or, or you know, obviously making sure we're not filming anybody else kind of in, in the spa area. Went into the rooftop pool first um, and had a had a quick swim, mm. um, a quick go through that. Um, I was also testing out a new waterproof enclosure for the camera. Um, so that was... Yeah, that seems to have worked quite well, and the camera is still working, as you can probably tell. <laughs> um, so yeah, that was that was all all good. Um, and then after we were in the the rooftop pool, um, which uh, they've got lots of jets around the outside of the pool um, for different kinds of massage purposes. Um, they've also got two very high powered um, jets, sort of over the shoulder sort of kind of jets, aren't they? But yeah. Uh -huh. I can't actually get under them, they're so forceful, they just push me away. I have they to push them. you across the pool. Um, and I could only just stand against them, but uh, when you put any kind of force up against them, you just spray water absolutely everywhere. Um, so you have got to be a little bit um, mindful of the other people that are in the spa as well, um, because it is very easy to splash water everywhere. Um, but on the rooftop pool, you've also got both an inside and an outside element to the pool. Um, and you can transition from one to the other without getting out of the pool because they actually have a, the pool go to the outside section under some plastic sheeting um, to, to help keep the heat on the inside of the building. Um, but the water is lovely and warm. Um, at no point was I cold in any of the pools. A um, little bit chilly if you get out of the water on the outside um, and then have to walk round. Um, but there was still facility to get in and out of that outside pool from the inside of the building. Um, then when we went back downstairs, we went through into the beautiful stained glass pool. Um, again, quite small pool, um, and within that pool there's an awful lot of original vintage features that they've kept around the pool, like the tiling. Yeah, so I believe in that area, the, the wall tiles all date to the 1920s, um, and I think that pool itself actually dates to the 1920s. It's possibly earlier, but there's certainly picture references that I've seen uh, from the early 20th century. And you've also got columns around the outside that are holding the, the roof up, um, and then the, the, the stained glass itself is lit from the inside um, with artificial lighting, so it's always got that lovely colours coming through on the mm. stained glass that they've got. Yeah. And there's all uh, wooden uh, kind of sort of 
uh, I think they're called like steamer chairs, and so the wooden kind of deck chairs um, are, are laid out around there, and, and there's uh, palm trees and plants. So it it feels very very early twentieth century, very Edwardiana, which you know is <laughs> right up our street. <laughs> Well, as you walk through the archway, on your left, um, you've actually got the, the third pool um, at, the, at the spa complex, which is the relaxation pool. And this is under um, a gorgeous vaulted ceiling, um, which is made to look like the night sky. So it's a very dark blue and it has uh, LED lights uh, kind of sort of pin pricking through it um, to give the illusion of stars. And then there's... Um, colour changing kind of mood lighting. It's very subtle, it's not like really intense. Um, it's just just very, very subtle and very low light levels over that pool and it's just dark and calming and just really, really lovely. Um, then on the, the right hand side opposite the, the, the relaxation pool is the uh, the, uh, the, the sauna rooms. Um, so yeah, you had the, the infrared room first, yeah. then it was the Biothermal room. Biothermal room, which has got extra moisture in it, yeah. um, rather than just dry heat. Yeah, um, and then opposite them was the Finnish sauna, which is obviously the the the, the, the dry the dry heat sauna. Um, and in between all of them, at the far end, you had uh, two showers and the ice fountain as well. So after you've done a you, you sort of baked yourself in one of the saunas, you can come out and you can use the the ice on your skin so to close your pores and cool you down um, and it's the only time I will ever put <laughs> chunks of ice willingly on my skin <laughs> and it was constantly flowing the the, the ice fountain it, it was quite a, an impressive thing just to sit yeah. and watch and it's quite relaxing just watching the little pieces of ice just drop mm. down onto the top yeah and it's all beautifully tiled with uh, kind of little metallic mosaic tiles um so yeah it's really really nice and then within that area, um, it, they're also playing very calming music, very soft, very background environmental music, mm. um, just to take the edge off of it, because I think otherwise all you would really hear is the dropping of the ice in the pools. Mm. Um, and then you've got the the main pool that you're referring to that's also got the LEDs in, in the roof. Um, both that pool and the pool we were talking about previous are both mineral pools, so they're using the water from Buxton Spa itself. Mm -hmm. um, With very little uh, treatment added to them. I don't you. believe there's any treatment added to them Certainly at all. Certainly not in the, the 1920s pool. Mm. I'm not sure about the other one so much. That one wasn't as, as warm as the other pools. Mm. Um, but you didn't get that strong chlorine smell like you get in a swimming pool and um, there was none of that um, and the lady who showed us around did explain that we're not having the, the treatments in, uh, in the waters um, it, it's a lot more gentler on your skin and, and your hair um, so if you are adverse to kind of chlorinated water or things like that then those pools are going to be the ones for you and they do actually drain the pools every day and refill them so it's not the same water week on week on week it, it, it is fresh water every day which is why they don't have to put the same chemicals in that you normally would see in a, in a swimming pool mm. um, and then from the, the pool itself um, on the right hand side you've then got um, a, an aromatherapy room mm -hmm. um, which had a lemongrass and eucalyptus um, scent yeah. in there um, which was for us we found it was a little bit too subtle yeah. Um, yeah. which okay. again compared to the other um, spa that we've been to was possibly a little too subtle and then in the next room you had the hottest steam room that i think i've ever experienced um, <laughs> it it was amazing for your skin but it was hot to the point that you couldn't comfortably breathe through your it nose was very very hot um, um, yeah. and you do have to be very careful in any of the saunas or the steam rooms or anything like that because you it's very easy to stay in there a little bit too long and then when you stand up, the heat can get to you very quickly. Mm -hmm. So I do recommend taking regular breaks and making sure you drink plenty of water mm -hmm. in them. They had um, iced water available um, in little dispensers. If you go get a glass of water um, as, as often as you wanted. Um, and a lot of people we saw had their own bottles of water down there as well. So yeah, keeping hydrated when you're using the, the, the hot rooms is very, very important. And also remembering to have and actually factoring in a little break so that you can take on something a little bit more 
rich really and something like some orange juice or yeah. some tea or are actually just factoring in that you you will want to stop somewhere in the middle um, and you don't with a spy you don't want to be pushing yourself too far because it is very easy to just sit there and let it wash over you and then when you do finally need to get out it, you can feel a bit wobbly mm. now that kind of brings us on to the relaxation room um, or the lizard lounge as uh, it, it was renamed <laughs> in the warm relaxation room here at Ensana Spa at the Buxton Crescent Hotel and I have it to myself. So these, these are heated tile beds. So they're so warm and lovely and it's just so quiet. There's all salt lamps in here as well so these look a little bit brighter on camera than they actually are. It's really low lighting kind of calm you've just got the orange glow from the salt lamps and then the ceiling is lit with this soft blue but can you see the well I say Victorian it's probably Georgian um, vaulted ceiling down here it's so calm and relaxing and it's so quiet and yeah there's nobody else here there was one lady here but she's gone now and yeah, this is, I could just stay here all day. I am jokingly calling these the lizard beds, <laughs> which is a reference to my friend who is always cold and she calls herself a lizard. So yeah, these are for her. <laughs> oh yeah, I could just stay here all day. It's so nice and warm. And you can see they're slightly, the beds are shaped. This bit just goes into the kind of the lumbar area of your back, cover your back, and it's just so nice and warm and toasty. Um, but you need to make sure you put a towel down because the beds, the, the tiles on the beds get quite hot. Um, and when I, I came in here yesterday evening or yesterday afternoon and laid here probably for about half an hour, <laughs> and yeah, when I got up, um, I actually had red red marks all on my back and on the back of my legs. <laughs> so yeah, definitely put your towel down. Up there was the, uh, the lady who showed us around the spa when we first arrived did say to put your towel down. Um, but I think that it just slipped down and yeah, my back was actually on the, on the beds, but yeah. This is so nice. I need to stay here all day. <laughs> um, and that was kind of Joe, Joe's probable favourite favor area really. Yeah, I, it's, I mean, I, I love the pools. The pools were, uh, were amazing, um, but I've never really been in a relaxation sort of room before, um, and I was kind of intrigued by it. Um, and the lady took us down there to show it to, to you, and she takes you off down the corridors, past all the treatment rooms, and it's quite a walk. It's a kind of a windy corridor um, right down to the end. Um, I'm assuming originally it would have been the cellars for the, uh, for the, the, the Georgian hotels above. Um, it's got all vaulted ceilings, stone, not stone, brick vaulted ceilings. Um, and yeah, it was just really strangely calming down there and just nice and warm. And then you have this amazing heated seats, which you'll see in the little piece of footage that we're going to insert. It was just, just so nice to just sit on a warm sort of tile seat and just completely relax you know I could have sat in there for hours it was and you yeah. say warm but they were almost it, you couldn't lay on them without a towel and yeah, you, I do, yeah. you would burn yourself very quickly as Jo found out um she, she got a little bit of a red mark on her legs where she was just off of the towel yeah. yeah um but they were properly hot <laughs> and I couldn't I couldn't stay down there too long purely down to the fact that uh, there was too many other things to go and do um, but Joe was down there for a, a fair amount of time. I think I sat there probably half an hour or yeah. so um, uh, on each day as well. So I did on the the afternoon we were there, and then again in the in the morning. Which was good because we got footage of it as well while it was mm. uh, while it was very quiet. Yeah. So yeah. So there's a bit of footage that we'll, we'll probably insert somewhere around here where I actually had the the relaxation room. Well, we had most of the spa to ourselves throughout the throughout the morning. But yeah, I had the relaxation room complete to myself. Um, so yeah, I was a little bit of footage about that. 
And in terms of treatments that we didn't have while we were there, they have a whole range of different treatments, and I recommend having a look on their website for more details on that. Mm -hmm. um, but one of the things they do have that I've not really seen in a lot of other spas is the salt room, which I managed to go and have a sneaky look at with one of the members of staff. Um, and they had shipped it in um, the, the entire room. Um, and I cannot remember exactly which country, so I will look that up. Um, and we can pop in some of the details in the um, information yes. below the video. Um, but the actual salt room itself um, was also had probably about six inches of Dead Sea salt in there, and it looked like snow. Um, absolutely crazy um, space, but uh, at some point I think we'd probably quite like to go down there, and it's softly lit with candles, and it was just a very calm environment. Mm -hmm. I think it was a 30, it's 35 pound upcharge. I think it was 35 pounds for 50 minutes off the top of my head. Yeah. Um, so um, on this occasion, we didn't do that, um, but yeah, we would potentially like to in the future. And in terms of the other treatments, I know that they, they do different hydrotherapy massages. They do traditional kind of spa massages. They do various mud treatments as well. Yeah, mineral baths. They have mineral baths. The mud treatments that they do, they ship in the mud from one of their other sister hotels, which again is a highly mineralized mud, I'm told, but uh, we didn't see any of that or go through any of the information on that because we weren't ultimately going to be doing that this time. Yeah. I mean, to be honest, we've never really done sort of on separate spa treatments and um, we are very happy to go to a spa and just you know relax use the the saunas and the steam rooms enjoy the pools and sort of the relaxation areas and just have a kind of a, a chilled out kind of day just you know escaping from sort of every day and and just actually like sitting and stopping and and just sort of yeah relaxing essentially <laughs> and the, the great thing of that spa because it was predominantly either underground or just above the ground, you were completely cut off from everything that was happening outside. You had no idea what time of the day it was um, or what the air quality was like. Um, I know when I came out of the spa, it was a very high pollen day and instantly was having issues with that um, practically the minute that I went outside. Yeah. Um, but in the spa, not at all. But yeah, um, after we had had our, our morning of the spa on our own um, we then went back up to the room had a quick shower got changed and then went off into to Buxton itself to um, take everything back to the car um, and then we decided to have a quick wander around the pavilion gardens um, which were restored in 2003 um, beautiful buildings and um, unfortunately I don't think we took a great deal of footage around there so we'll probably insert some still photos and um, so we'll, mm -hmm. we'll we'll insert what we have mm -hmm. um, and then we stopped and had uh, a bite to eat um, and a cup of tea um, before coming back home and then um, I, I think at the end of the video now where we'll probably uh, just go over some of the costings as to what we paid and how everything worked out. Yeah, so I'd like to stress that this video is in no way sponsored by uh, the Ensana uh, brand or the, or the Boxing Hotel. Um, we are completely paid for this ourselves um, and we just wanted to share our thoughts and opinions on, on the hotel um, because of its historic nature. It, it appeals to us. Okay, so uh, with the costings of the hotel itself, um, it was £195 for the room, um, and that included the breakfast in the morning as well. Obviously the pricing includes your access into the spa as well uh, for the duration of your stay. Um, I can't remember if I explained before, but at this time there are no day passes available um, because of COVID restrictions, they can only have uh, hotel guests in the spa. Um, so I don't know offhand what the cost of a day spa ticket would be, um, but yeah, obviously including that into your price, um, you know, for, for two people to spend a day in, in a spa, I don't think the price was that bad. If you go by pricing in other spas that we've um, since looked at, um, the going rate seems to be for an afternoon in a spa for about six hours, you're looking at about 60 to £70 each. 
Um, so for £195, including the room, it, it is not really a bad price, especially as the breakfast was also included with ours. Um, obviously, different offers may be available at the time that you see the video. Yeah. And again, just to, to clarify that we were in the the cheaper rate rooms, the attic rooms, and there are other rooms available on the, the lower floors in the hotel, um, but they do command a higher price. And then our evening meals and cocktails came to £66. Um, the only other cost that we had on top of that was the cost of the parking, which was £10.80 in total um, over the, uh, the two days. Um, so... If you are staying for more than probably two days, the concierge parking is probably the way to go, assuming that they keep the pricing the same at the £20 mark. Um, and that's, again, we would potentially take advantage of that because you wouldn't have to then go and top up the meter every morning, um, which was the only real snag with the parking. But the good thing with the parking is it was only probably a five, 10 minute walk um, round the corner. Um, and again, there is parking under the main car park, which gets locked overnight. And so there is the potential to actually have your car locked up in there. So in summary, um, we had a fab stay. We really, really enjoyed it. Um, I think we would potentially consider staying there again. Um, also, we do have to stress that we were very, very fortunate in that we essentially had the spa to ourselves um, on the, uh, the the morning session that we did. Going forward, obviously, we, I, we, it may not be like that. It could have just been a very, very lucky fluke. Um, it was a Monday morning, um, so I don't know what the hotel is like at other times during the week. Um, on the, the Sunday afternoon, there was certainly more people in the spa. Um, it didn't feel crowded at any point, although I do wonder if when this, the hotel is kind of back open at full capacity and they have day, day visitors in, um, whether it would feel more crowded at that point. Um, but it is still a very, very nice space. It is beautifully designed and um, we love the, the mermaid murals um, and the kind of the mermaid theme that kind of uh, ran throughout the spa. Um, the fact that you were actually bathing in the older if not the kind of original spa facilities um, uh, uh, making a feature of the, the the heritage aspect of the building um, as we said at the beginning of the video that's something that really appealed to us um, I mean don't get me wrong we we love a good modern spa um, but yeah having that that historical aspect to it was 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 really something and and makes visiting uh, the the Buxton Crescent Hotel um, a real special treat The town of Buxton was settled by the Romans and in AD 80 was named, and I apologise if my uh, Latin pronunciation isn't quite right here, um, Aqua Arnamisiae, which means goddess of the grove. The clear warm water spring still sends up more than 1 million litres of water per day at a lovely 27 degrees Celsius. From medieval times, the well has been a shrine to St Anne and pilgrims travel to take the healing waters and give thanks at the chapel. The shrine was apparently hung with cast off crutches and walking sticks by all these people who had been cured by the, the, the magical healing waters from the, the well. The chapel uh, and the shrine itself was dissolved by Henry VIII in 1538 and the shrine's idol was destroyed. The story of Buxton then picks up again in 1779 when the fifth Duke of Devonshire, who owned the great estate at Chatsworth, just a short drive away, commissioned the Crescent to be built. The Duke had visions of transforming the, uh, what was just a market town at the time, into a grand and fashionable spa resort um, as a rival to the perhaps more famous and well-known spa resort of Bath in Somerset. He commissioned the architect John Carr of York and the Crescent took 10 years to complete. 
It featured two purpose-built hotels, uh, lodging rooms, the baths, the pump rooms, and a grand assembly room for holding dancers. And uh, the assembly rooms are actually being restored as well. So again, people will be able to have events like weddings and functions in there, which will be amazing. The spa buildings were used right into the 1950s and the remaining hotel closed in 1989. And after that, the building sadly fell into disrepair. I think it's fair to say that although Buxton had its heyday through the kind of 19th century, um, it didn't really maintain its draw in the way that Bath has. However, that should by no means stop you visiting this beautiful and historical location. Uh, it's nowhere near as touristy as Bath, um, and it has the stunning Peak District National Park right on the doorstep. And of course, in 2020, following a 17-year restoration project costing over £50 million, the Crescent reopened its doors as an 80-bedroom, five-star hotel and a modern spa run by Ensana. I really hope you enjoyed following along on this unusual little adventure and um, if you like this video and you'd like to see more of this kind of us going on it's got a kind of heritage history bounding holidays uh, do let us know in the comments down below um, it's certainly something that we'd like to do um, but yeah leave us a comment um, and please give the video a, a thumbs up by clicking the little uh, thumbs up icon just below as well um, if you are not already subscribed to the channel, please do consider subscribing. Um, that way you will get notified when our next videos go out. Uh, you can also follow our adventures on my Facebook and Instagram channels, which I will link down below. And if you also want to support this channel a little further, uh, you can also buy me a coffee on my coffee account, uh, which helps me continue making videos for this channel. So thank you very, very much for watching and we'll see you in our next video. Take care guys, bye.